Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, hope you're having a good day. Today is another fun painting, Whistler's Mother, uh, simplified. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on mine, I went over the traceable with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. And in today's painting, we're going to be using quite a few shades of gray. We will use a little bit of raw sienna for the skin tone and the hair, but otherwise we're going to be sticking with shades of gray. So we are starting with a light gray. You can see that I pulled some white aside, um, pulled out a little bit of black, and then used the residual on my brush to make the light gray. And here demonstrating a few different brush strokes you can try. I am using that medium flat brush, and we're going to fill in that back wall um, behind the figure. I am using student grade paint, so I recommend if you're using student grade paint to apply it a little bit thicker so you have a little better coverage, you can also um, apply two coats to this. Uh, do two uh, layers if you need to. But as I've seen in my other videos, please adjust for what you need with the tools that you have on hand. You can use other materials like watercolor, colored pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you want uh, to complete this. So we're filling in that whole back section with this light gray, and if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. Little variety is not going to be a bad thing in your painting. It makes it a little bit more unique to you. Um, so yeah, so we're filling in that whole back area. Then we're going to make add a little bit more black to the mixture, make a slightly darker light gray, and we'll put a little bit of shadow on the wall. So again, here, grab it a little, just a little bit more of that light gray or that black to add to the light gray. And I want you to observe the place that I put it. And then with light pressure, you can kind of blend that into your base color. And I am using the residual that was on the brush of that the little bit darker gray um, as I go towards that right hand side. And then also realizing that I needed it to be a little bit darker. So grabbing a little bit more of the darker kind of medium gray, wipe that brush off, and then blend it into the base. This is called wet on wet blending. And if you're a little bit nervous at this point, um, since I do teach a lot of first time and beginner painters, remember to breathe as you are painting. Um, if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help with your process and your application. You're doing a great job. So now we're going for a medium gray. Um, and that was probably two shades darker than what you were just using, and that's adding a little bit more black to your gray mixture. And if you have a slightly darker or lighter gray than what I'm using on the screen, totally okay. And we're going to fill in um, that bottom portion of the wall behind our figure. And then making a bit more of that medium gray, again, if it's a little darker or lighter than what I'm using or what you were just using, totally okay. You also have full permission if you want to change out colors for this painting um, and use something other than shades of gray, go right ahead and switch out colors to what you want. Another thing to note, if you are on a stretched canvas, when you bring your color to the edge, I do recommend that you wrap it around the sides, the top and bottom of the canvas. It just looks a little nicer hanging on the wall having that color wrap around the edge. And here we added a little bit more black to our mixture, going for a dark gray for the bottom um, of this section, and then blending it into that medium gray. And adding it in a few other areas, wiping that brush off, and then with light pressure you can blend it into your base layer. Again, this is called wet on wet blending, and something that you will get more comfortable with the more that you paint. And here, same thing, grabbing a little bit of that white, slapping it in a few areas, wipe off the excess paint from your brush, and then go back with light pressure and blend it into your base color. You will notice with the lighter colors, with the white, um, that it will diffuse rather quickly, 
in your base colors. So just get comfortable with your process of blending. So a good spot to pause the video, take your progress photo. And like I said, this is a simplified version from what the original. So um, I made this a bit more medium raw sienna, about a one to one ratio white and raw sienna for the rug on the floor. In the original painting, it's a bit more gray. So if you want to um, Google the original painting and focus more on those colors, again, feel free to switch out anything that you want on your painting. So filling in that, mod, um, that medium raw sienna on the floor on both sides. And again, if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every single time. You're doing a great job just by painting at home. You're getting more comfortable with getting creative at home. You're getting more comfortable with your tools and you can paint this same image multiple times and each one will be a little bit different because your skills are going to get going to improve each time that you paint. So now grabbing that direct raw sienna, we're kind of putting it um, on the top portion of the floor and in a few other areas. And again, if you're inclined to put this color somewhere I do not, or you see um, you're referencing the original painting a little bit more, adjust to what you feel like you want to do for your painting. All right, grabbing a little bit of white. We're going to make that rug a little bit lighter. So just slapping it right on there. And that original medium raw sienna um, is still wet. So it's making it easy for me to blend this white paint into it. If your paint is already dry by the time you get to this step, you can skip this step or just paint a second layer on top of um, the rug on the floor. Your call. All right, so making a little bit more of that raw sienna. I forgot the mat underneath her feet. Um, so going back to the white and raw sienna mixture to fill that area in. And another place to take a progress photo and feel free to pause the video at any time that you need so you can work a little bit longer on your section. You do not have to keep up with the pace of the video. And here we went in with the direct white just to get something on the canvas for the pictures um, on the wall behind the figure. And I am making sure I go right over those traceable lines, right over those sharper, Sharpie marker lines um, from my base. Now we're going to move into black paint. We're going to fill in her dress. And as I apply this one, you will see the brush stroke show up. You'll see places where it's a little bit thinner paint. I am using student grade acrylic paint, and that is what I recommend for my first time and beginner painters to get comfortable with painting. <clears throat> but with student grade paint, you will notice that it's a bit more transparent. So you've got a few options. You can apply it a little bit thicker or you can apply two coats, two layers of paint on your canvas. And in some of my other videos, I do apply two layers. On this one, we will not. Um, this one, I'm applying it just a little bit thicker, but again, you can see my brush stroke showing up. And if you are applying it a little bit thicker, um, you'll notice in a moment that I do hold my brush at a 45 degree angle, um, so that way I can apply it a little bit thicker. So we took some of that light gray from prior. We're putting a little bit of a highlight where her arm is and kind of where the bend in the knee would be. Um, and then we'll go back with some of that direct black paint and get it a little bit darker. Again, you're just utilizing your power of observation, whether you're looking at my uh, video or the original painting. So here we go, we're grabbing a bit more of that black. I am holding that brush at that 45 degree angle and applying it a little bit thicker. Again, remember to breathe as you are getting into your painting process. You may realize that you're a little bit nervous and holding your breath. So going back to that black paint and the small pointy brush, we're going to fill in the chair. Again, going right over all of those traceable and Sharpie marker lines. And then she has her feet uh, right there. We're going to fill those in as well. You guys are doing a great job. And then we're going to kind of outline a few other areas. Some of the outlines are optional. And again, reference the original painting uh, to add or change anything that you want. And then on the original painting, each of the pictures on the wall did have a nice kind of thick black frame. So that is keeping with the original. But again, 
anything in art, especially with my videos, full permission to make this your own, take it your own direction. I'm just really, really happy that so many of you are getting comfortable with the painting process at home and realizing the relaxing benefits that it brings to your life. That's the best part. So you're doing great. So just outlining that rug a little bit, again, completely optional. Pause the video at any time, take your progress photos, it's really nice to go back and look at your progress photos and see how much your skills have evolved in a short amount of time. So here for the skin tone, I'm starting with the white, adding a tiny, 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 tiny amount of that raw sienna just to kind of warm it up. And we're going to fill in the face. And again, I will be going right over those um, traceable lines. And she's got a little bit of a neck showing and her hands. I actually forget to do the hand, so I'll be going back to that in a moment. <laughs> and that happens a lot in painting. So I'm adding a bit more raw sienna to that mixture. Um, and right where the eye socket is, just kind of putting a little dot in there. I know it's kind of hard to see. There are more details on the original. Um, but so just kind of get a little something in there so you have a little bit of a shadow space. And then I did grab that raw sienna with a little bit of black going a little bit darker for the part of her hair that is shining through or showing through on her bonnet um, or her headdress. Not quite sure what it was called back of the day. All right. And then clean that brush. And then this is the part where I remembered I forgot to put the paint on the hand. So I'm going back to that light raw sienna. We're going to fill in where the hands are. I'm going over those um, dark lines. And then we'll go back in with white paint for um, her bonnet, her, her headdress, and the probably doily that she is holding in her lap. All right, you guys are doing a great job. So here we go, grabbing that white, getting that base color on there. And then we're going to go in with a light, slight light to medium gray and do a little bit of shading in there. So as you do this painting, you are strengthening your power of observation, whether you're looking at this or the video or the original. Um, and that's a big thing in art is learning to uh, paint what you see, not what you think. And by strengthening your power of observation, that helps that skill. So again, she's got um, the white that's going around um, her head on her lap. And then a little bit kind of on the left hand side of her shoulder. Again, remember to breathe as you are touching the brush to the canvas. If you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky, that will help your process. And here we go, grabbing that light gray, light to medium gray. Again, observe where I place it. And then we're just going to use that light pressure to kind of squish this light to medium gray into the white to give a little bit of depth. Um, to the white drapery around her face and with what she's holding on her hands. Again, this does not have to be perfect. I just want you guys to get comfortable with the painting process at home. Please find multiple outlets to get creative, multiple times to get creative, and watch your skills improve. The only way it gets better is with practice. All right, and again, feel free, add anything that you want to your painting um, from the original that I did not add. There was a little bit of a kind of a scene inside the picture, so I'm just going in with that light gray, just giving a hint that there's going to be a rectangle in there. If you focus on the original painting, there is more details in that picture, and feel free to add it to yours. So again, thank you guys for getting creative and just getting painting and comfortable at home. Until the next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. 
but please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.